Okay, hi, we are, we are here at uh, DevOpsCon in Munich, and with me is John Willis from Docker. Hey. Great to have you here. Yeah, great. John, you had a great keynote right now um, about, let's uh, say, the, the, the human factor of DevOps, where you covered a lot of interesting topics uh, about DevOps culture. Perhaps you could shed a little bit more light on what this cultural thing really means. Yeah, you know, I. Um you know, one of the things uh, I thought about a lot near the end of last year, which was how do we elevate this message up to higher levels in an organization? And I started thinking about how do you describe DevOps to a CEO of a large, large corporation? And so that became my kind of theme of like, I want to build a presentation um, in 2016 around this idea, right? And so um, so the, the, uh, the idea is to me, you know, a lot of stuff we've learned is that the high performing organizations, the things that we call DevOps and we, we kind of drill into like what do they look like, you know, from surveys. And they seem to have this one common pattern is they put a high value on human capital. Now a lot of people in the US say, oh don't use that word human capital because it, it sounds very HR, which is a legacy, but like I don't care. I, at the end of the day, um, this, this idea that the way we get high performing organizations because the title is you know turning human capital into high performance organizational capital and and the message has to be clear that it's about how our people work together within an organization and the tools are interesting and um, important but not as important as how we figure out how to get people to collaborate um, Andrew Schaefer a good friend of mine has this presentation says uh, there is no talent shortage and what he's saying is, while Silicon Valley is scrambling to hire the next most important person, what he's saying is your talent is inside your company. What you're missing is you're not learning how to be a learning organization. And, um, and so that's where the human capital is, that you get you know, one plus one equals five if you can basically figure out how to get people to collaborate, trust, high trust cultures, uh, visible, uh, transparency, then the tools that you get, again, they're important, um, but nowhere near as important as getting people to collaborate in a high trust collaborative environment. That's where the high performing organizations make breakaway advances from the people who don't behave that way. Now the, the question is how to get there, how, how to become a DevOps well, that, company. That was the, that, to me, that was the kind of biggest part. I tried, in my presentation, I tried to sell you on, it's about human capital, and that there are companies that do this. And then the second part is, in the large enterprises, we have um, 50 years of body of work in certain categories that aren't called DevOps, but isomorphically map and are directly underpinnings of what we call DevOps. First being lean. We can learn so much from Lean. And by the way, if you're a manufacturing company and you're trying to sell DevOps you're, and, you're, and you're in a manufacturing company, there's a chances are there's a whole body of people that completely understand Lean and all the principles there. And all you have to do is say, we already do this to your, your executives. Um, the other one is learning organization. That's another, I say that DevOps is a three-legged stool. It's, learn, it's Lean, learning organization, and safety culture. Learning organization, again, there's a good chance that there are a bunch of people in your organization that um, either follow John Cotter uh, or Peter Senge, the fifth discipline. Um, so you, it won't be hard to find those people like, oh, is that what DevOps is? Oh, DevOps is lean? Oh, DevOps is learning organization related to Peter Senge or John Cotter? And then third is, if you're in engineering culture, you probably have, which is the third leg, a resilience engineering, human factors, body of work of what you're doing there. And there's incredible work there about how people think about systems thinking, uh, how they think about blamelessness cultures, um, blameless postmortems. You know, how do you and, and, and the whole resilience engineering people like Sidney Decker, Dr. Woods, Dr. Cook. These are all people that um, get brought in when a plane crashes, and they don't look for like what the pilot did wrong. They look for the systematic um, view of all the things that, could, that, that contributed to the failure. Um, in a hospital, baby dies, right? They don't go in and try to, in fact, it's even more important in a hospital to create um, a systematic view because to get people to talk 
about what went wrong. Like nobody wants to admit it. Like the nurse doesn't want to admit that she flipped the table and the wrong needle was used, right? So th these people that focus on how do you get information to find out how to make sure it doesn't happen again, and the key is a psychological safety, which basically includes um, trying to set a blamelessness environment. Mm. And uh, you know, um, uh, Sydney Dagger has a book called Just Culture, where it's like we have to get away from the kind of balance of you broke it, you go to jail. It, it's a system view. It, it, it's just fascinating work, but the meta point here is, like there's, we could call it DevOps, and that's great, but what we really need to do to um, attack the resistance is to say, you already know about this stuff. You, there's somebody in here doing lean. There's somebody in here doing some form of resilience engineer, and there's somebody in here like studying learning organization. Mm -hmm. so, so we're talking about a transformational process, so. The, um, we could think about DevOps as a, as a grassroots movement, or do you rather think it is necessary to have also some kind of bottom-up process coming from the management, or is it a balance between the two? You know, you, know, you need both. Mm. You need ground, you're in Groundswell, and Groundswells can work, but you have to be really tricky and clever, and that's like one of my um, you know, hacks is to t convince them, hey, by the way, you're already doing this. You know, you lean, let me show you how it's lean. You do, but, but in the end, um, un, just like any major transformation organization, um, you have to have executive uh, buy-in and support. And, you know, and so until you get the executives to see the value. Now, a lot of executives today, some really big companies that I talk to that are making really good strides in what we call DevOps, um, are even today just given a lot of trust so I, I talk to these companies that do amazing things, and I ask them, what does your executive staff think about this? And they're like, you know what? They trust us. They're giving us the leeway to do this, but we still haven't gotten to the point where we can show, you know, like the Toyota versus General Motors story. Uh, Target in the U.S., large retail, probably put more investment in DevOps than any other company I've seen. They have 15,000 square foot, what they call DevOps Dojo, in their headquarters that they've allocated to the practice of DevOps for companies to come in. I've talked to them. They still don't have that aha, like Target is beating everybody else because they're doing DevOps. So we're still early, um, and the, the lucky ones have executive buy-in that say, you know what, I believe what you're doing is right. I can see incremental change, um, but I still do want to see that, like, you know, what we call a Harvard Business Review uh, version of our story. Um, so it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tricky game. Mm -hmm. So now, now we talked a lot about culture, but there's obviously also the, the, the technological aspects, uh, for example, microservices, container technologies, this new world of cloud platforms. Do you think there's also a um, connection between those technological things Yeah, have an impact on cultural change? Yeah, no, I, you know, there's, there's, a, there's an interesting conversion, right? There's different levels of abstraction, right? I will argue all the time that if the cultural aspect isn't right, then everything reasonably is going to fail at some point, unless you get really lucky. Then on the far, far end of that is just tools, right? And I think selection of tools is important. Like, I love things like Chef. I love Docker. I, you know, certain, I would say always use Jenkins and Git, right, for this, right? Like, and somebody might argue. But the point is, I think there's a balance of the right tools, right? And, and so you got the culture and the tools. Now, perfect tools, everything perfect, you got it just right, bad culture, done. Then there's a middle layer, which is really important, which is these kind of meta, meta ideas like cloud native and um, you know, microservice architectures in the sense of a, a kind of meta way I'm going to change my business. I'm going to redevelop my software to be very component or bounded in, in the, uh, infrastructure microservices, right? SOA version two, right? Um, so that's important and, pro and more important than, again, the tools, less important than the culture. But that, that convergence, because one of the beautiful convergences that we've seen, and we just got lucky, is we have, what, 10, 10 years of this driving Eric Evans domain-driven SOA, Eric Evans, 12-factor apps, microservices. At the same time, there's adoption of like Linux containers to Docker to, to like production grade, and all of a sudden, like in 2013, well, 2014 or 15 probably, probably 15, they both meet. And like all, both on parallel threads, independent of each other. Oh my goodness! Like microservices, 
and containers. Like they work great. So we kind of got lucky as an industry, cloud native as a, as a, uh, um, as a methodology for decoupling and, and how do you do like, you know, how do you deal with a kind of network compute and all those things. So this is a really interesting convergence that just happens to be at the same time between containers, um, cloud native things like frameworks and microservices architectures. This all plays really well. Again, more important than tools, less important than culture. Mm. So thank you very much. Yeah, Tom, no, it was for fun. This great insights. I love coming here. It's a great conference you guys run, and yeah, it's great. Yeah. So enjoy the conference. Yeah, totally. Here. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> thank you.